Welcome to the She Did It Her Way podcast, where it's all about making the ultimate leap from your nine to five and building a business and life you love, all while doing it your way. I'm your host, Amanda Bolin. Let's get started. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of She Did It Her Way podcast. I am so excited to talk to you today about how to get the most out of your coaching programs and courses that you invest in, not necessarily the ones that you are hosting, you are running, you're creating, but I'm talking about the coaching programs that you decide to raise your hand and turn over your money and invest in in order to grow your business and your life. This is something that I have been thinking about. It's been about six years and I have invested thousands and thousands of dollars to grow my business and to grow myself. And some of the investment decisions, I have learned so much about myself and why I made them along the way. And I hope that this podcast episode serves as a bit of a roadmap to help you really assess which program or course is a good fit for you, a healthy mindset to approach that program or course, the investment that you made, and how to set up a routine and structure for the programs and courses that you enroll in so that it doesn't become a digital product that creates and collects digital dust. Okay. So very excited for this. You know that I love my routines. You know that I love to lay the foundation because I think that having the proper systems in place is actually what allows us to be successful. But before we dive into today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to this week's podcast listener, Eva, who left an iTunes review named valuable, fun to listen to and validating in a time when the internet is constantly yelling at us with shoulds about how to build a business. I love Amanda's emphasis on practical ways women can do business our way. It's so reassuring and validating to have this resource for how to strategically build a successful business. The conversations Amanda's hosting about systems, which I ignored far too long, authentic marketing, so important and appealing and mindset, which is always a work in progress and needs reminders are so important. Eva, thank you so much for leaving that review. It means the world to me. You guys have no idea. I still go through moments where my imposter syndrome kicks in and I'm like, oh my gosh, is this even helpful? And It is so amazing and incredible and something I don't take for granted to be able to see these reviews and even emails that come in that are like, oh my gosh, your your episode has helped me in this type of way in my business. And it just reignites and reaffirms that the information that's being shared, whether it's from me or my guest, is super helpful in your growth and the growth of your business and your life. So it just means the world to me. And thank you so much for taking the time to leave the iTunes review. All right, so today, the three key things that I want to dive into about when it comes to how to get the most out of your coaching and courses you invest in. And just for the sake of this episode, I'm just going to call them investments, okay? And this is in the past six years, I have enrolled in over $60,000 worth of coaching, worth of training. And I, it has allowed me when I was sitting down writing this outline for this episode, I really started to think about my approach. What was my mindset? What were the results? Why did I not achieve the results? All these things that then came out into three specific buckets on how I'm going to approach this episode. And bucket number one is how to cultivate a healthy and inspiring mindset towards courses and programs. And two, the second bucket is how to actually decide which program or course is actually the best fit at that time for you. And then third is how to get the most out of any um, coaching program courses, investments that you make, because this is really key when I reflected back on the programs that I got the most out of and really understanding, you know, why maybe did I get the most out of this program or another program? There were really those three themes. I looked at what was my mindset? How did I decide that that was the right program or course for me at that time? And then what was my routine around that program? And I do want to take a moment, acknowledge that some of you might be tuning into this podcast and 
have not made a financial investment in yourself or in your future. And that's okay. And that alone can be really scary, exciting, and overwhelming at the same time. So I hope that this podcast episode can serve as inspiration and guidance for you in approaching that decision on which program uh, to invest in. And you could also be listening to this podcast and have rolled, have enrolled in, in previous courses or coaching programs, gotten mediocre results or results that you didn't expect or hope for. And maybe that was in part because you had the best of intentions, but life got busy. And so you never followed through fully. And I am over here. You can't see me, but I am raising my hand. That has certainly happened to me. And again, that's why I'm going to share some of these tips, because if we can create a routine and structure around it, we are more likely to keep ourselves accountable to it as well. And anytime you consider enrolling um, in another course. So if you've had that experience where you've signed up for a course or you've signed up for a coaching program and you kind of got mediocre results because life had happened, then our brain for the next time that we're about to make an investment could create that voice inside in the back of our head that is reminding us and saying, hey, remember last time you paid money? You actually never finished the course. So what makes you think that this time will be different? And so you may find yourself doubting yourself and stalling on taking action because you've created that thought loop of doubt. Um, or you decide to enroll in the in the course of the program and you look for evidence of what happened in the past of finding maybe holes or finding gaps. And then you create the same results where where you get the mediocre results versus the ones that you you want. So you may be also tuning into this podcast and have had nothing but amazing experiences with all courses and programs that you've been a part of. So uh, that's amazing. And I hope that again, today, this episode serves as a way to create even greater focus and to allow you to really dive into the programs that you're a part of and create that routine. And I just wanted to share those different ways because I know some of you are tuning in from all different areas. And I just want to let you know that this podcast episode is going to hit on all of those and let's get into it. So the first one is the mindset. This is really when I look back on all the programs that I enrolled in and the ones that I got the most out of, which by the way, I will say this, there's courses that I enrolled in years ago, four years ago, that I will still revisit to this day. And that is so valuable to me. I think about, okay, at the time when I made that investment, it was you know, thousands of dollars, but I still have access to the content. And I'm so grateful to have access to that content because it, at, similar to kind of when you read books, if you read a book five years ago and you read it today, it's going to hit you differently. You're a different person today, most likely, hopefully, uh, than you were when you first read that book five years ago. And I think the same thing could be definitely said for if you enrolled in, in enroll in standalone courses or courses that allow you to have lifetime access. Don't think that just because you haven't gotten use out of it within that 60, 90 day time frame that it's a waste because I go back all the time to courses that I have been enrolled in and I see things differently. I go through the exercises this time, five years later, let's say, and it just hits me completely different. So don't discount and don't rule out courses that you've enrolled in years ago and think that they can't add value today. Okay. So that is part of mindset, but that's a little prelude into the mindset. The main thing with the mindset is you have to own your results. You are the only one that is in charge of the results. The coach, the courses, the training is there as a vehicle to get you from point A to point B, but it can't do the work for you. And I encourage you to pay attention to the thoughts that you have when considering enrolling in the course of the program and are you thinking about this in a way that allows you to show up and be the person you need to be to achieve the results or are you looking at this course as the end all be all it is the one it is the ticket that's going to change everything right we want to avoid assuming that this course or this investment that we're about to make is going to fix all of our problems and challenges and make being a business owner just whoop, easy, right? That's not how this works. Because for example, it could be easy to enroll in an email marketing course and think that we'll wake up with an email list of a thousand subscribers as if enrolling in the course is going to take care of our lack of having an email list. Now, there is 
I do believe there is some sort of transformation in the transaction. So even just putting your credit card down and investing in yourself is calling you to be a different version of yourself. That's that's only a part of it though. The other part is making sure that we own our results and have the commitment and the right mindset from the beginning. Again, the courses, the coaches, they provide us the vehicle and assistance in achieving our goals, but they can't recreate, they cannot create the result for us. And that's why it is really important that when you are about to make the investment is to have the right mindset, own the results, create that commitment that you are committed to that result and to that program. And be open to challenges and the highs and lows along the way. Again, I don't say this just so that we attract them, but I say this so that you're not thrown off when they happen because they will. It's, I remember, I always like the the phrase when, when a guest came on, they say, marketing works. You just have to keep working it until it works. And that's the same thing with the business. Like our business works. It, it, and it works until we, we continue to work it. So if it's not working right now, we just have to figure out how do we make it work and making sure that we are staying committed to the result and going back to the why in which you originally signed up for this course or program, okay? The second part of the mindset is having this approach of learn one, implement one. And I highly recommend sticking to one course or coaching program at a time, unless they are complementary to one another, which I'll explain here in just a moment. For example, if you enroll in an email marketing course, I'd encourage you to make that email marketing course, make email marketing your focus for the next 30, 60, 90 days, or however long, just depending on your schedule. If you are someone who is working full time and building your business on the side, maybe you make email marketing your focus as the core thing that you implement for 60 days simply because you have a full-time job. If you don't have a full-time job and you have a little bit more time and flexibility in your schedule, then you can take a month and say, this month I am going to focus on implementing email marketing. All my efforts and everything I'm going to do is really focused on nailing email marketing. And that's why when we can create these structures, it's going to help us be able to create focus and create the results that we want. We want to avoid enrolling in a new course every single month without fully implementing the coursework from the previous investment we made. And this is where it can get really easy to take passive action and consume content. But what is going to matter the most is making sure that we consume and then we implement, making sure that we are taking action, taking massive action. Because if we don't, and we find ourselves taking courses after courses after courses to kind of, it's like we want to hoard the information and the content, we could get ourselves in a place of overwhelm because we can leave open loops. We start things, but we don't actually finish them or close the loop, which leaves that loop open, allowing us to feel depleted and overwhelmed. And then we think, oh, that last course didn't really work. But the question we have to ask ourselves, which can be really hard is, but did I work that course? Did I show up? Was I committed to the results? Did I take massive action? And I think this could happen a lot when we're starting out because we're trying to do all the things and we want to test all the things. But if we start too many things, it could actually lead us to burnout because we're starting something and not finishing it, which is why, again, I go back to focus on learning one, implement one, as opposed to learning so many different things and trying to implement so many different things at once. We want to start building a bridge and get it from point A to point B and do it once versus starting five different bridges from point A to point B, but never actually making that connection. Where this could be different is if you're in two programs that are not competing with each other and they are potentially complementary. So for example, I am in a life coaching program. It's my friends, it's my friend, Natalie Bacon's, and that's a monthly coaching program. It's personal development. It's really focused on personal things. Versus in my business, I am in a Facebook ads accelerator program. And so those two programs are very different. They do not conflict with one another and they're very separate. 
that is where something like that can be very complimentary in the sense that they're very two complete different programs, but they're complimentary in the fact that because they are different, they're not conflicting, they're not competing. And sometimes again, we think we're being productive um, simply by being in a lot of programs because we're learning a lot. But again, it's not about the consumption of the content. It's really about the implementation and making sure that we have that habit or routine. Another example, and this happens with um, students inside her way to 75K, which was formerly formerly known as branded as Elevate University. We have since changed our name to Her Way to 75K membership and members inside this program because the program is really designed around accountability, helping members sift through all the noise, helping them create a schedule that allows them to produce work and create the results that they want, specifically for those that are building their business in parallel to that of their full-time job. We do have women in the program that are building their business full-time, but just to give you some context, it's really rooted in teaching them how to be able to be better managers of their time, be better goal setters, goal planning, to focus on one area, to identify what are the thoughts that they need to think in order to achieve those goals, and then get access to weekly coaching and also other trainings. We we produce a, a new training every single month. There's bonus trainings in there. So the idea isn't that you come into her way to 75K and you just go through all the courses to go through them. They're really there as a way to support you in the event that let's say your focus for the month of June is social media. Then you may go through the social media trainings and really implement social media, okay? So I share that context because I think it's gonna help when I give this this scenario of complimentary where students inside the program may have enrolled in another program or course and they use her way to 75K as a way to get that coaching and accountability to where it's not where it's overlapping or it's going to be overwhelming to them and they're getting told two different strategies. And I think that's a really key thing is that if you are enrolled in so many courses that are overlapping, you're going to find that coaches coach differently, coaches have different strategies, coaches have different processes. And that's why we really want to streamline our focus and the mindset of when we approach which course or program that we decide to enroll in, okay? Again, the other thing about the learn one, implement one is that you really want to make sure that the mindset is, is it's not just about showing up to show up, really show up to learn, lean into the group group coaching calls, listen to the replays if you can't make it live. Think of a question to submit on the coaching calls as well. So you want to avoid being passive if possible. You want to be as engaged as possible, which again, I'm going to talk about at the end of this episode, how you can create routine and structure to make sure that you're engaged. Cause that was another thing that I saw that when I created that routine and structure around the programs that I enrolled in, whether it was a standalone course, or if it was like a co- live coaching program, it made all the difference. So again, know and own your results. Be really mindful of the questions and the thoughts you're thinking prior to enrollment into the course. And also make sure that you're creating that commitment to the results and commitment to the program regardless and no matter of like what else is happening and focus on learning one and implementing one as well. Now, the second piece is how to decide which program or course is the best fit for you. And Again, this varies, I believe, a little bit because it really matters which stage of business you're in. When you're starting out and if you're overwhelmed and let's say you haven't taken any action at all, you're thinking of starting a business, um, you're not really sure which direction you want to go down, but you have a little bit of an idea. You're just kind of in that paralyzation stage where you're thinking, oh my gosh, what do I even do? Where do I get started? And in this case, in this stage, the key is to just start and create some sort of track record for your brain and for you to create that momentum to go from zero to one so that you're in that energetic space. You are creating that momentum. So for example, Even if you don't know exactly who you want to help or how you want to help them, is it one-on-one, is it group coaching? And you kind of have that hesitation in your brain's like, this is new. I've never done this before. I don't even know what I'm doing. How do I even start? Will this work? Am I going to fail? All the thought drama, right? Creating content is a great way to produce work and practice being consistent and diligent and in turn build up your audience. So if you think you know what it is that you want to do or who you want to help someone with, take creating content 
whether it's Instagram, YouTube, blog, podcast, and just build that habit and that muscle of being consistent, creating content and come at it from an, a lens of experimenting to, to think like, Who's showing up? Who's resonating? What am I learning about this? Do I like this content, right? And focus on that as an area for a way to get you into action and to get started. If you can commit to, let's say, creating content for six months consistently and showing up, you will then, as a result, build an audience and be further along than if you never even started. Because I know the fear in the beginning is, what if I do this wrong? What if it doesn't end up exactly the way that I want it to? And those thoughts really paralyze us and keep us exactly where we are and keep us stuck. So again, while at the end of the six months, and I'm just saying in six months, you could do this three months, you could do it for a year. The whole purpose is, is that even though it's, you're doing it for the six month mark, let's say it might not be at the end of the six month, exactly where you thought you would be. I mean, if you could be, but even though if it's maybe not exactly the place that you thought you would be, that you'd want to end up, you at least got started. And now you know more about where you want to go versus six months prior. It was, you were in this la la land of, I don't know where I want to go. I don't know where I want to start. You at least now have something to iterate. And I always say that you, it's really hard to iterate and create the next version if we don't have something to work with in the beginning. So again, if you're tuning in and you're like, you're in that stage, the biggest thing in that, in that stage and phase is just to get started. Okay. Just to start, create some sort of track record. The other is that as you grow and as you create that that track record and as the years go by, you really get to take what you've learned in the past and look at it through the lens of how do I want to make it better in the future? How do I want to plan my days? How do I want to plan my launches? And this is where I think that because we have more knowledge, we can apply the just-in-time education. And that's really asking the question of what do I need in this moment to take me to the next level, which we should always be asking ourselves that question, by the way, as we continue our growth. But in some seasons, it may be to simply learn to be consistent and just start, as I shared earlier about if you're in the beginning stages of building a business. For other seasons, it may be that you focus on email marketing for a quarter. For other seasons, you may decide that you want to start a podcast. So that's what you focus on for 60, 90, 30 days, what have you, right? Maybe it's Facebook ads. That's the season that we are in right now that I am in and I really want to learn it so that we can continue to use marketing to reach an even bigger audience as we continue to grow and scale. But the just-in-time education really requires you to take a step back and say, where are my areas of opportunity? Where can I grow? Where do I want to grow? And then going out and doing research about which program makes the most sense, whether it's coaching, whether it's a course and spending some time, but not too much time on doing the due diligence around which program is the right for you. This is something that is really eye-opening in the fact that there are so many programs out there that teach you how to podcast. There are so many programs out there that teach you email marketing. There are so many programs out there that teach you how to build a one-on-one coaching business or a group coaching business. And so it may not, they all have, they all deliver tremendous results for their clients, but you may find that one way that a coach coaches is more in alignment with the way that you respond to coaching. And I think it's valuable to do research, not just on the results that coaches get for their clients, but it's also valuable to do research on the type of coach that you'd be working with because we're all so different and we all require different ways of being coached. And so you want to make sure that you have, it's a good fit for you. But I also say caution, like you could find yourself doing too much research and that causes you to spin out. So be really mindful as you go in that research phase. But the whole just-in-time education is asking yourself, what do I need in this moment to take me to the next level? What do I need to learn? What do I want to learn as well? And that is how I believe in part of deciding which program or course is the best fit for you, as opposed to being distracted or getting served up an email mark or getting served up an ad on Instagram and thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I need and must do it. Um, And it can become a shiny ball syndrome. And then again, 
make us lose focus of what really the result and our vision is. And that is something that I'm going to share too, is also creating this constraint because the marketing people are ninjas out there with marketing and they do such a great job and they produce the results. There's so many different offers out there, but it's also important for us to create that 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 constraint so that we're not getting distracted or getting having like being how do I say this being tempted to enroll in a program when we have yet to finish everything that we wanted to finish in the last program that we enrolled in okay so the last piece again as this bucket again that all kind of funneled into getting the most results and getting the most out of programs is really about the piece on the setting up the routine and being able to plug myself into that program. Now there are coaching programs out there that are, you know, a six month container, maybe an eight week container. There are courses out there that it's simply standalone, you enroll and you get access to all the content. And so how you might approach those individually is a little bit different because if there's already a predetermined time frame, six months or eight weeks, you know that that is your focus for that length of time. Whereas if you enroll in a standalone course that you get access to all the content, it's really up to you to own and decide, do I want to focus on this for 30, 60 or 90 days before I start to go on like a maintenance program? So for example, if you sign up for Podcast Your Way, you can decide, okay, I'm going to focus on this for the next 60 days, let's say. And then after you master and you really implement all the program, all the content, all the teachings after the 60 day mark, then you kind of put it on a maintenance program where you're not, it's not your full focus, but it's something that you are integrating into your routine every day. Okay. So those are the two things in terms of looking at the container of the program. You always want, I always encourage you, have a goal or an outcome that you're working towards. So what does success look like for you at the end of the program? And again, always own your results. This is really key. We always, I always believe that we need to have some sort of North Star. What do we want to produce? What do we want to get out of it? For the six month accelerator for Facebook ads that I'm in, I was very clear about the three things that I wanted to do. I made them only three because I wanted to be able to take my time as I move through the program. But the point is, is just always know, begin with the end in mind, what do you you want that goal or what what does success look like as well if you've enrolled again in a course and one that you can go at your own pace make sure you decide that 30 60 90 day window and then once you've decided that length of time that is on the calendar or it's already predetermined by the program that you're in immediately create the foundation by putting any coaching calls with Zoom links on your calendar right away. Some programs give you a calendar that you can just integrate. Some of them you manually have to do this, but this is like part of the setup of any program. And I highly recommend doing this because this is going to make you stay even more accountable. It's going to make you carve out that time. So making sure that you are putting any coaching calls with the correct Zoom links, with the link to submit um, questions for coaching on your calendar. Take that time. Um, Then the next thing I recommend is carve out specific time blocks on your calendar for when you are going to be in that program, whether you are consuming content or whether you are taking and producing, taking action or producing, make sure you carve out ahead of time when you're going to work on that. It's just like if you're in school, in college or taking any sort of program, like carving that out and that time and protecting and defending it so that you know that that's the time frame that you're going to work on that particular course. Maybe it's every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. or maybe it's every Tuesday morning from 5 to 7 a.m. But put that on your calendar, make that a standing appointment, make that a standing date with yourself. And as you start the program, you'll figure out what exactly you're going to do or produce in those time blocks so that you can go back in and do them in 30 or 60 minute increments as well. The next thing that I recommend is create a folder inside your email service provider. So for me, I have Gmail. If I get immediately when I enroll in a program, I create a folder or a label. And then anytime things come through, like my username, password, any weekly emails, anything that I want to go back to, I just create that label. I put it in that folder. So it's so easy to organize. We do this in our onboarding for Podcast Your Way and Her Way to 75K. We make it part of their onboarding checklist to tell them to do these things, the members and the students, because that way, anytime that email comes through, 
It's neatly organized. They can be easy to be found from weekly recaps, their username, password, you name it, right? Setting up that structure and that system is key to the success of the ability to plug yourself into that process. The next thing is create a bookmark on your browser to make it easy to locate course um, program or content, the Facebook group, all of the things that you're going to be using throughout the next 30, 60, 90 days or however long that time frame is. Really getting that, setting that foundation up, create the creative folder. So again, we use Google. In our Google Drive, there's folders inside that then that's where I keep all the content for that specific course. That's really helpful. So again, getting yourself set up and organized because the more that you're organized, the more you're going to mentally have space to plug yourself into it. And I find that as as a human, when there were times when I didn't feel like I had all my coaching um, stuff that or programs that I was a part of and it was disorganized, I was less likely to show up to a coaching call. I was less likely to be engaged. I was thinking about how, oh, I don't really have any questions to ask, which... I really, really encourage you to force yourself to think of a question to ask or submit at every opportunity possible. Even if you think that you don't have a question to ask, you do have a question to ask. Ask yourself and then ask that question in coaching, whether it's live or submitted ahead of time, because that's going to help you create the momentum to continue to stay engaged. As soon as you start telling yourself that, oh, like I'll go next week, I'll go next week, it becomes a track record. And then your brain isn't used to creating that habit. And so you can also use this if you have been part of a program, but maybe you've kind of gone through the course, but haven't really gotten the most out of it. You can re-engage with the course in this way and re-engage in coaching and in the Facebook group, assuming that that's part of the course in this way. And the last piece is again, don't rely on the program, the coaching, the coaches, the course to motivate, inspire, or produce your results. So really think about, create a list of thoughts to think when you are enrolled in in this program or that you've created this 30, 60, 90 day that's going to allow you to stay engaged in what you're doing. Because what I will tell you, and this is completely natural and this happens, is that at the beginning of enrolling in a course, the motivation or, or program, the excitement, the motivation, everything is so high because there's the newness to it. We're getting engaged. We've got a lot of energy and momentum. And then we start to take action. And then we kind of hit this roadblock where it def- deflates us, right? And that kind of slows down the energy. It slows down the momentum. And that's really where the pivotal part comes in where we have to recommit to why we signed up for this program. We have to recommit to the impact and the results. And that's why I always say, like I shared earlier, make sure you know exactly why you signed up for this program, know what you want the goal and the outcome to be. And then the last piece is, is make a list of three to five supporting thoughts to think on purpose that can create that inspiration for you, that can continue to motivate you to moving forward and taking action even when you don't feel like it. Okay. Now, as a final note, you've stuck with me to the end. Final note in this is really like about create constraints. I've talked about this a little bit earlier, but create constraints to not get distracted by other offers that are out there when you are currently in going through an offer. Trust me, it can be really easy to think that you need something that someone is marketing to you because their marketing is just that good. And again, while their program may be beneficial and it's that good, the question is, does this aid in my focus or create split focus? right? You can always have this running list of things that you want to do eventually, but it's so important to stay focused on what it is that you're doing now, because if there's that shiny ball syndrome and we're like squirrel and we're like, oh, that sounds really fun. Oh, that's going to be the ticket to make my six figure business. Oh, I need that in my life. Like pay attention to that. Again, those offers might be really good and they produce amazing results. We just want to stay focused on completing what is at hand. And I think sometimes we think that we need that offer because we are subconsciously thinking like, what if I don't get it now? What will happen? And it creates a scarcity thinking that surrounds that decision. And again, there's always going to be offers. There's always going to be opportunities. There's always different ways and processes to get to six figures, to get to seven figures. What is important is just to decide which one you're going to focus on this moment. That is going to be 
absolutely key because where your focus goes, your energy flows and results will show. But if we're constantly shifting our focus, we're constantly shifting what we're working on, it's going to be really hard to see those results. And the last piece is be really mindful of what you make your investment mean. And what I mean by that is if you expect and you go into it for this program or this course or this investment to solve everything for you, to solve your problems, to solve your challenges, you could be setting yourself up for this place of disappointment. And especially it's around if we think that we can outsource and we can, when I say outsource, I think what I mean by that is if we think that we can enroll in a course and then automatically our problem is solved, that's really naive because no matter what stage of business we're in, there's always going to be different problems, and different challenges. And so we want to go into, we want to go in with a clean mindset around the course and the program and not thinking like, oh, it's going to solve my, pro- my problems and be my magic ticket or the one that's going to get me to that six figures, but go into it with the commitment of daily commitment of showing up. What can I learn? How can I make incremental changes? How can I take consistent action every day and look for that one or two, one or two things that you want to get out of that specific program. Sometimes, and including myself in the beginning, I would go into a program and I would think that I'd have to have these insane breakthroughs and have this insane shift in order for that investment to be worthwhile. But sometimes it was the smallest shifts that actually made the biggest change later on that I didn't see right away. And so I encourage you again to go into it and have that healthy, that clean mindset. And as a recap, number one, own your results from the beginning, no matter what program that you decide to invest in. Number two, make sure that you decide which program is the best fit for you based on where you're at in your journey and asking what do I need in this moment in order to get to that next stage. And then the third is make sure that you set up systems and structures in place so that that you can set yourself up for success when it comes to that coaching course or program. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love for you to tag us on Instagram. If you are someone who is starting early stages of building your business, you're working full time, you need help, you need to get some clarity, you got to create some structure, you want accountability, come check out Her Way to 75K. It's our monthly membership. You can um, go month by month or you can go ahead and subscribe to an entire year access. It is incredible. There's so much value. There's over 50 trainings inside. Every quarter you get new templates for Instagram and Pinterest. We have weekly coaching calls. There's so many things. There's Facebook group, so much inside. I would love to work with you inside Her Way to 75K. You can learn more. Just head to shedidaherway.com and then click become a member and learn more. But until next time, keep doing it your way. If you enjoyed today's podcast episode, you can head on over to she did it her way.com where you can access the entire vault of she did it her way podcast episodes. And you can also access free trainings and resources all about how to make the ultimate leap from your nine to five. And if you enjoyed today's podcast episode, I would be so grateful if you headed on over to iTunes and left a review, letting me know what you love about the she did it her way podcast. Until next time, keep doing it your way.